Well, I look at the state of this. I feel it must be Groundhog Day. The next camera to be serviced, a Retina 2A. And a shaky container of bits. I don't know. I like, seems, sometimes it seems like you're living the same day over and over. So what do we know about this one? Well, it was an eBay purchase. And it wasn't very good. It's got problems. We better find out what problems it's got. Just looking in the top here, I hope that's sand and not metal filings. Oh, the focus. The focus only moves to about five feet. That won't go around all the way and it doesn't feel nice either. The lens is quite dirty and I think that surface looks a bit scuffed to me. to discover what's going on at the top of the camera. I presume that the owners had the, the top off. Yeah, the rewind's loose. I want to discover if we put the film advance lever back on here, I should be able to find out exactly what works and what doesn't work because at the moment that's a bit of a mystery. The focus is obviously a problem. Difficult to say what's causing that at the moment but it might be a screw backed out that's um, blocking the action of the uh, focus scale ring. Top cover off, nothing obvious to see there. Now the cocking rack's in place, so that suggests to me that if we put the advanced lever back in the correct position, we can make this thing wind again. The whereabouts is this in the cocking action? Let's see, I think it's probably about there. Okay, so yes, that's that part's complete and undisturbed. Let's put this back together. It didn't sound like that shutter fired, which means that. Most likely, I didn't check the shutter speed to see what it was set to. But we can certainly do that. Me get this top in place. Oh, frame counter spring broken. Well, that's pretty fatal because there are no spares. Oh, there's the tip of the frame counter spring sitting loose in there. So it is very much an unknown as to whether that frame counter spring was broken when the camera was purchased, whether it was broken in the uh, 
explain around with the film advance that thread doesn't run down nicely while well, the shutter forward that's good so the shutter works film advance is inclined to jam Looking down from the top of the camera, this doesn't look like it's entirely square. And the shutter seems to move on that front standard quite a lot, which is suggesting that the focus mount is loose on the front standard. Okay, so we've got some direction. We know that the frame counter spring is broken, and that's going to be a problem. We can tell that the, the shutter appears to fire, the camera appears to cock. But this focus problem is, is certainly an odd one. So I think we'll probably need to investigate that first. If we can figure out what's going on there, it'll be much clearer what's, how the repair will go. So out with the shutter and lens assembly, I think. That is tight. And I'll pop that to one side. Now I'm looking for something obvious here. I can see immediately the head of the screw here sitting high and that might be catching on something. No, oh, it doesn't appear to be touching anything. I'll tighten it up. That'll just rule out that as a possibility. That's one of the screws that holds the Shutter to the front standard, there's one over there that we can see that's loose. There's one there that we can see that's also loose. And there's one on this corner that's also loose. We'll see if the focus... Well look at that. So there was our focus problem. Loose screws, the screws that hold the focus mount to the front standard. Okay, well that's that little mystery out of the way. What's it leave us with? Well the film advance tended to stick. Um, that screw didn't really go down nicely. It may be that that's just a bit... I think that the ratchet inside there may not be working quite right either. I might be wrong. Okay. Alright. So here we have a Retina 2, 2A, that uh, certainly is in dire need of servicing. It doesn't look like the problems are going to be fatal, except for the frame counter spring. And that is something that I'll have to be considering. Yeah, there's a lot of 
brass filings in there from that screw thread suggests there's been a problem there perhaps someone cross threaded it at some stage it, though it did tighten down okay now but not a good sign film advance lever the latch, end of film latch is there and working correctly, that's always a good sign. Let's take this lot apart. These pieces need to go in the cleaner. This piece has to be cleaned by hand because of the painted marks. Likewise the number disc of course. I'll have the top cover off. I'm separating these pieces out to those that will be get, getting cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner and those that will be getting cleaned manually. Top cover. Glass is a bit grubby. Nothing else particularly obvious about that. The shutter release, I'm looking to see if there's a spacer washer in here because often there is and if you're aware of its presence then you can be looking for it. No, there isn't one in this case. Because if there was one and you lose it, things don't work well. I'll separate those parts off, put the spring to one side, take off the uh, film release button put it spring to one side. The rangefinder, did I look out through the window with that? It does work, it's not a hundred miles away from where it should be. Um, although, because this had been loose here, probably the rangefinder was all over the place because this whole front would be floating. It's still got a lot of play there. So there's probably more loose screws than the ones I immediately discovered. Let's have the rangefinder off. The rangefinder is a bit hazy, but um, not ridiculously so. Those screws are a bit tight. rangefinder itself very sticky you see how slow it is at oozing back into position that coming back to the infinity position it's pretty sluggish so that's just gummy with dried out grease means that hasn't been serviced in a long time the rewind might just as well come off the screws loose there There too. Okay, so there's a bit of a pattern here of loose screws. So why do you get loose screws? Well, the most likely cause of loose screws is the camera's either been subjected to a lot of vibration, you know, sort of the rattling about in the car glove box for long periods of time. Or the other thing that I tend to put that down to is a lot of, a lot of temperature cycling. If the camera has been somewhere where it's prone to a lot of temperature changes, um, you can think of a, an unheated room where the sun comes in during the day, heats the place up nicely. At night the heat races back out the windows and the place chills right down again. In a situation like that where you've got a lot of heat uh, changes the cycling well what will happen is that the screws basically the different uh, being different metal to the body expand and contract at a different rate and and just basically come loose okay so we're out with the cocking rack I've got three screws here holding this bracket down 
one of them's awkward to get at, this one. That was not loose, or not particularly loose. One at the end here. That looks a bit suspicious, that screw. I think that's a foreigner. It is. That doesn't belong there. I know what that job what job that screw would do, but it's not that one. And we'll lift this spring off the post here. And that screw is very much like this one, which should be where it is. And this spring Put that carefully to one side. Now it appears to me there's a bit of red here. I think someone's locked a screw in there with a touch of lacquer or something by the looks of that. Take care of that. And there should be a spring in the body to get out. There's I'm sorry the camera had stopped recording. I don't know at what stage we lost that. I think I got to the end of, end of a file size limit. Sorry about that. Just taking out the three screws that held the top of the uh, the top bush for the film advance. And here's the clutch. Take that apart. That's the top of the camera dealt to. Now the bottom of the camera. Two screws hold the surround here around the tripod socket. To be careful with those, they're chrome brass, very easily damaged. Let's get this surround off. Sometimes these are sticky. If they're st very hard to move, usually it means that someone's forced a tripod screw in here that was badly formed, a bit conical, and it stretches out the top. And as it stretches out the top, it locks that collar in place. Okay, so I'm going to have to peel this leather back now. Before I do that, I'll show you a trick, because there may be times when you don't want to remove the leather from the bottom of the camera. If, for example, you wanted the door off for some other reason, to get in here or just to deal with the door, you can take the door off without removing the screw from the base. And that's done by removing the top hinge pin screw. Partly collapsing the front of the camera. And you can swing this door out and lift the pin out of the socket in the bottom of the body. So that's a way of getting the door off without having to remove the leather from the base of the camera. Very rarely would that be a useful thing to do. But if something unfortunate has happened when you've been reassembling the camera, like the film of the shutter release shaft had uh, come out and the washer had, that had been present in here had fallen into the, the bellows, removing the door will give you access to that to fish it out without having to dismantle everything else. Otherwise it can be very hard to get that washer back because if it's greasy it'll stick to things where you don't want it to stick and um, just cause you problems. Right, well I'll recover that screw from the that door while I'm here so I've got them all in one place and I'm not searching the bench looking for a screw that's not missing. That's quite stiff. Now often there's a washer a spacer washer in there to take up the slack between the door and the casting and there certainly was a washer there. 
sometimes there are two. There's only one in this case by the looks of it. There's a lot of brass filings falling out here. I think they're coming from that film advanced sharp. If I looked at the top of that film advanced sharp, that's twisted and damaged. The top of it has got a, a quite a pronounced twist to it. I think that's been pulled right out of shape. If I was looking for a reason for that to have happened, I would say that the camera had been dropped on its head, possibly with the film advanced lever sticking out at an angle at the time, and that top is just bent over. Now that's the hole down the middle of that squared off shaft, you know, removes a large amount of the metal. There's not much strength left there. That's of quite a thin wall of brass there. So this shaft here at the top has, has just died. It's twisted up. I will try and straighten that up. I may have to replace the whole shaft. Um, but that's why that screw was stiff to come out and stiff to go back in. It's because this whole shaft has changed and so the thread profile inside it has changed. And the screw doesn't want to go down inside the hole anymore. So back to the base of the camera because I'm taking this thing apart. That front's not extending very well. That's better. Okay, so I want that leather off there. I want the leather off because I want to be able to get in and dismantle all of the film advance mechanism and get to the screws that hold the struts in place. Because the camera obviously had problems with loose screws, it's important that all the screws in the camera get attended to. Because where they're loose in one spot, they're just as likely to be loose somewhere else. And if I don't go through and sort that out, It'll come back and bite me. This leather is stuck very well. The, uh, the glue is stuck very well to the body. The leather here is uh, delaminating, I think you could say. Basically, the surface of the leather is coming away. probably leave some fibres on the casting. That won't be a problem, it will should go okay. I've got to peel the leather back to this point really, otherwise we're left with a, an obvious fold or crease um, that you'll see if you don't peel it all the way back. Because they never glue back down exactly the way they came up. But if I can push that crease back to this point, it'll be practically invisible. This boss doesn't come off. That's on top of the leather. The leather doesn't go around that. The leather goes on top, is underneath that boss. And that, that was crimped in after the leather was put on the camera. Now why they chose to do that? I don't know, it's a crazy practice. We've got a screw under here somewhere, hiding in that glue. There it is. Okay, so the stuff at the bottom of the camera, let's just shake those fibres off. Well, there's, there's another washer. So there were two washers in that for the hinge. You've got to watch for those because they often fall down into the bellows and they only fall out on the bench later. Let's have this focus mechanism apart. Find out how much loose stuff's really going on here. I'll start by removing the rangefinder coupling. Yeah, these screws are loose. 
That one's not. I don't put that through the cleaner because you, you'd lose that black paint part there. So, our focus helical. Is there any sign that the focus scale ring has moved on the outer helical? That's always a possibility given that the grease has dried out. It might have been stiff at some stage and caused problems. It, there doesn't appear to be any obvious sign of that. So I'm going to scribe my marks across there so I can put it back in exactly the right place. And I usually put two lines across at the base and here I'm marking the out, the focus scale ring and the outer helical. And the same at the top except I put a single line there. Now the inner helical, I've got to mark the position of that relative to the outer helical. But I need a reference point to do that at. And I do that when I have the inner and outer helical. That their front surfaces are dead level with each other. That's where I scribe my lines across. And that's not necessarily at the same point. That I've got this sitting. Okay, so that's off. Let's have a look at this. Are there any more loose screws here? Well, these were the four screws that held the focus mount to the front standard, and I tightened those up. You saw me do that before. Are there other loose screws here? Well, there are six screws here that hold the retaining ring in place. I'm just checking those now. None of those are loose. There are four screws, the black ones, that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. None of those are loose. That's good, so I'll, I'll remove those screws now. That tells us that the movement we had was due to the four screws that I tightened down before I took this apart and any play that's in the focus helical because it's quite dry. It certainly doesn't feel very well lubricated. And the grease does tend to take up some play there. So we'll remove those four screws. And I should be able to take this out of the camera. Cover the four screws from the front standard here. Let's have a look at the helical. See, that's quite loose feeling. Anyway, we want those screws out. I want this thing apart. This is all quite sticky with that old grease. Old grease sort of does a... changes in its characteristics from being a slippery lubricant to being a gummy adhesive. Still got one screw left there, so that's why that wouldn't come loose. And it still won't come loose, it's glued down with grease. That's better. That's very sticky. 
this focus mount I've got to clean by hand. You can see that brown stuff in there, that's the dried grease. That will have gone like a hard wax. And here I've got to line up my inner and outer helical. So I've got them dead level across the front surface and then I can mark them so that I know where everything goes back together. Just putting a straight edge over there. Okay, so I can extend my marks. I had two marks here at the base. I had one at the top. There's also a mark across here, somebody else's mark, which is at pretty much the same position and um, was probably intended to tell them the same thing, to tell them that that's the point where stuff went back together. This cover I need off the front here. That screw at the top's loose. That would not have been a good thing. If that uh, rattles about too much, the point at which the shutter cocks can differ slightly. And if that inevitably means that the shutter might not cock, particularly if you've got it set to the 500th of a second speed, which requires more force. And so everything gets stressed and if things are not being held firmly, then it doesn't move far enough to cock it. Okay, that's pretty good. Right at the base of the camera here, I want all this film advanced stuff out here. 